Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and another paper crafting inspiration video. Today I'm going to dig through my paper pads and see if I can come up with an idea to create something fun. I settled on this Minte paper collection. This is the Lavender Farms. I have the 6x8 paper pad and I have the ephemera that coordinates with it. So I'm just flipping through the book here, taking a look at what we've got. And I thought I kind of liked the inspiration on the front of this paper pack. So I kind of wanted to recreate it. So I'm pulling out one of each of the patterns with the exception of the cut aparts. I'm going to leave those alone. So I'm going to take one of each of the pages out of the book and then set that aside. So I end up with six pages and they have two different designs one on each side and I'm going to take these pages to my paper trimmer and chop it up into strips. So I've got half inch strips, one inch strips, quarter inch strips, and three quarter inch strips. Just a bunch of random sizes. I just want to make sure that they're nice and straight and I'm going to cut up all six pieces of paper like this and end up with a whole bunch of strips that look like this. So I'll have a multitude of patterns to choose from. So once that's all done and I have all of these strips all cut up into my random sizes, I'm just going to line them up in front of me so that I can dig through them to create my project. Next, I'm going to pull in my paper trimmer again and grab a sheet of cardstock. And I'm going to cut this in half across the 11 inch side. I'm going to cut it at five and a half inches. So I just want to work with a half sheet of cardstock and I'm going to save the other half for my card base. So I'm going to grab some double sided adhesive. I have this very large roll of sticky tape and I want to cover the entire sheet of cardstock with this sticky tape. So this stuff is extremely sticky. So I just want to take a minute to line up my cardstock and then lay it down into the adhesive. And then any extra spots that I miss, I'll just tear up small pieces to cover it. Now this stuff is really great because it's terrible. So I just grab my ruler and tear across that edge. So then we have this whole sheet covered except a little tiny strip at the top. So I just take a few small pieces and run them across the top there. And then in those small pieces, I decided to peel this away so that I could line up my little strips. In hindsight, it was really difficult to lay the strips on afterwards you'll see what I mean so I'm just going to peel away the first strip and then I'm going to start lining up my strips onto my cardstock and attaching it to that exposed adhesive now the struggle I had was pulling that adhesive from in behind the strips and it ended up making some of them crooked so I would just advise to start with all of the adhesive removed and just peel away as you go Anyway, so I'm just going to line all of these strips up. I'm just picking a different pattern, different thickness, and just trying to get everything as straight as possible as I go across this page and cover up all of that cardstock with this pretty pattern paper. So I cut out this part because it was shameful with me trying to fight with my sticky tape. So I got all of these laid down. A couple of pieces didn't get as straight as I wanted. But I mean, it's not perfect, but that's okay. I just use my bone folder and press in that cardstock into the sticky tape. I thought any parts that weren't perfect, I could use a piece of ephemera to sort of cover it up. All right, so that is my background so far. I'm gonna grab some scissors and just cut away that excess that's hanging off. And I'm not gonna throw the excess away. I'm gonna keep it with all these little strips and scraps, and hopefully I can come up with another project with those small pieces. So I'm cutting away the excess, making my cardstock nice and straight, using the cardstock edge to make sure my strips are all nice and straight. And then I'm going to take this to my die cut machine. I'm going to actually end up cutting this piece in half because I want to use the whole piece on a card front. And I have some Gina K Designs Master Layouts dies and it has a pretty scalloped edge. So I want to create a scalloped panel for the front of my card. So I'm taking my sheet and cutting it in half at four and a quarter. And then I'll take my scallop border and line it up onto the center of my panel and use a little bit of mint tape to hold my die in place. And then I'll run this through my die cut machine. I did have to run it through with an extra shim because the cardstock and the sticky tape is a little bit thick. 
So when I ran it through the first time, I ended up running it through again with a sheet of cardstock as a shim, and then it cut out nice. So this extra border that I'm pulling away, I'm not going to use this part on the front of my card, but I'm not going to throw it away either. I'm going to use it on the inside. So here's the panel for the front of my card. And I'm going to grab that half sheet of cardstock that I had from earlier, and I'm going to pop it in my scoreboard and score it at four and a quarter to make a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. And I'll just crease that fold with my bone folder. I like to use a Teflon bone folder to crease my cardstock basis because it doesn't leave any marks or sheen on the spine. So I like that clean look. So that's my panel for the front of the card. I'm going to apply some extra adhesive because it's a little warpy. So I just want to make sure that that panel gets laid down nice and straight and flat. And I'll press all of that in with my bone folder. And now this little extra piece that's left over, I'm going to use that to decorate on the inside of my card. I did have to trim it down a little bit so that my card base would close with ease. So I just cut around the edges equal amounts off of each side of the little panel until it fit perfectly on the inside of my card base. I've got some tape runner here attached to the back of it and I'll line it up onto my card. And you just want to take your time because the frame is sort of delicate and it can get wonky and not lay flat or straight. I pulled this up a few times so you just want to be careful to make sure that you get this nice and straight. It doesn't have to be perfect. These aren't store-bought cards. These are handmade cards. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is pull in that ephemera, and I found a perfect piece of ephemera that would match lovely for the front of my card, and I'm going to take a little bit of foam squares. I can use every inch of that sheet of foam square, and I'll pop up this beautiful, delicate little piece of paper ephemera, and I love the way that looks. And then I also have a lavender bunch that I'm going to pop on the inside of my card just to bring a little extra something in there. And then that's it. I'm not going to do nothing else to this card. This could be a nice little note or a thank you or get well or just a hello. Super pretty. I love the patterns and the colors. This is a really, really nice color palette and uh, I really enjoyed the way this turned out. So I have a ton of strips left over, lots of scraps. I can make a whole bunch of different cards and designs and bookmarks and tags and all kinds of fun. So take a look into your pattern paper stash. See what you can chop up and turn into something beautiful. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed this little Chop It Up inspired project. Coming up on screen are some videos I think you may enjoy. Have yourself a lovely day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.